My name is John Marston, and I am chairman of the Elgin Heritage Commission. And before we be up, that was great. Right. None of you stood? <laughs> okay. Um, before we begin, I'd like to join you all with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge and thank our Heritage and Design Review Subcommittee Commissioners. And when I say your name, please stand up so we can recognize you. Janine Nevetsku. Where's Janine? Tonya Lachetti. John Regan. Marge Rowe, Dennis Raxworthy, Christina Pila, Scott Savell, and Scott's also the uh, chairman of the Design and Review Subcommittee, so he does all the hard work. Chloe Burkhart, okay. Michael Burns, okay. Joey Christ, Carly Gorick, Rebecca Hunter, and Chrissy Palermo. And I'd like also to thank our council members who are here. We have Rose Martinez, John Steffen, Mr. Steve Thorne, who served on the uh, Heritage Commission for many years, uh, Dustin Good, and of course, Mayor Captain. On behalf of the Heritage Commission, we would like also to thank the Elgin Armory, specifically Sergeant Scott Ray for all of his assistance with our event and allowing us to use this historic building. We'd also, we'd also like to thank Staff Sergeant Timothy James for opening up the building for us. We'd like to thank our caterers, Forkit Foods, John Weedmeyer for the creation of the plaques, Signs by Tomorrow for the plaque design, MGS Rentals for the chairs and tables, and a special shout out for Sue Campbell and Bobby Lou who are doing our audio visual. In April of 1937, ground was broken for the construction of the Illinois National Guard Armory. The land was donated by the Elgin Watch Factory and was part of the Works Progress Administration. The building cost, any guesses? $125,000 to construct and was completed and dedicated in September of 1939. Constructed in the Art Deco style, it is only one of the handful of these designs left with much of the original materials and design still intact. One of the most formidable architectural features and very much a symbol of liberty are the six foot tall concrete eagles sitting on their perch, standing guard at the entrance, each weighing approximately three tons. A silent reflection we can make to tie us to the past is making note of where we are standing or where we're sitting 
a space where soldiers that fought in World War II walked and many have come after them. And I want to thank you again for opening your doors and sharing this historically significant structure. The Heritage Commission continues to work on an historic research survey of the Midwest neighborhood, which helps identify structures in that area that have historic significance. We also created a bungalow map on our historic Elgin website that is being continuously added to using the extensive research completed by the late Elgin architectural historian, Steve Stroud. We're also excited for the upcoming events in 2024. This week kicked off the month-long celebration, including events, lectures, and tours that promote preservation in Elgin. You can find a list of events in the brochure that can be found at City Hall, the Elgin History Museum, Elgin Public Museum, Gail Borden Public Library, as well as digitally on the city's calendar in historicelgin.com and on your seats. We also encourage anyone to attend our public meetings. The Heritage Commission meets the first Tuesday of every month and the Design Review Subcommittee meets every second and fourth Tuesday of the month, both at 6 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. We also have some save the dates. Please join the Elgin Heritage Commission for our second annual car show to be held on Sunday, August 4th, just north of Festival Park, as well as the 42nd annual Historic House Tour, which will be in this area, the Elgin National Watch Historic District. <laughs> Uniquely, the Heritage Commission has had the opportunity to partner with the Elgin History Museum for the creation of an interpretive sign at 1405 Wing Street. Now known as the New Hope Baptist Church of Elgin, this little white chapel was built in 1896 when Illinois Park was on the very western outskirts of Elgin. Farm families donated the land for the chapel and the 29 members of the church constructed the frame building. The cornerstone came from Tyler Creek and was brought by a Civil War veteran and Illinois Park resident, Dexter Smith. In 1922, the church built a 20 by 20 addition, giving the building its current footprint. The congregation moved to a newly constructed church on Big Timber Road in 1985. The little white church was sold to the New Hope Baptist Church of Elgin the same year. The Illinois Park area also has ties to the Elgin and Belvedere Electric Company. Completed in 1907, this interurban train carried passengers and freight between Elgin and Belvedere. The rail line was known as the Dairy Route for over 20 years. The Illinois Park Waiting Shelter was located near the church, and passengers were picked up promptly on the hour starting at 6.26 a.m. The increasing use of automobiles and the Great Depression led to the suspension of the interurban line in 1930. This interpretive sign is a wonderful way to bring light of history long forgotten. We'd like to thank New Hope Baptist Church of Elgin, specifically Pastor Barry Jones, for reaching out to us and sharing their history. A dedication and unveiling of the sign will be held later this month and will be announced on our historicelgin.com website. Will Pastor Barry Jones and members of the New Hope Baptist Church who are in attendance please come forward and accept your certificate. Thank you. 
Well, good evening. This is a surprise being asked to speak, but I'm truly, um, and New Hope is truly honored and blessed to be recognized in the historical part of Elgin. The building there on 1405 Street was erected, believe it or not, in 1896. This year it's 128 years old. So to the mayor and the rest of the historic society, we say thank you very much. Mayor Kaplan comes by the church, picks up the garbage. He's the church's janitor. So mayor, we really appreciate you honoring us, members of New Hope on tonight. God bless you all. And now we'd like to start our plaque ceremony. And to begin our plaque ceremony, I'd first like to introduce our historic preservation planner, Kristen Sundquist. Elgin boasts a wide variety of housing. Modest cottages stand next to ornate mansions, and brick flats have been built adjacent to handsome single-family dwellings. This diversity of architecture is associated with Elgin's unique industrial and residential growth. In the mid-19th century, Elgin's two major industries were watchmaking and dairy products. As a result, business owners, managers, and workers lived alongside each other in a mix of homes that today express Elgin's rich historical and architectural character. To promote awareness and appreciation of Elgin's unique heritage, the Elgin Heritage Program was created in 1986. Since then, each year, property owners who have completed research on their home's architecture and history are awarded plaques for their efforts. For each selected home, the homeowner is presented with a plaque and certificate that states the date of construction and the original owner's name. In addition, all the information collected, including photographs and historic documents, are then placed on the Heritage Commission's award-winning Historic Elgin website, accessible to not only our residents, but as well as visitors interested in learning more about what makes Elgin a preservation destination. Tonight, we will present nine heritage plaques. Our first plaque recipient tonight is 527 Arlington Avenue. This home was built in 1923 for Charles and Ida Moat. Charles was city clerk, land developer, and worked as a barber. Bungalows sprang up all around the country after World War I, but primarily in urban settings where blue collar work was available. Elgin with its watch factory and related industries drew many new workers. At this time, the term bungalow was loosely used to describe any small home. 527 Arlington, with its double front gabled roof over a single story half with open front porch, um, embodies the bungalow definition. The wide eaves with large eave returns, three over one sash windows, exterior fireplace, square newel posts and tapered porch column are some details of the craftsman style found on this home. The longtime owners, Deborah and Tim Vrubel, have lovingly cared for the home for the past 33 years, and we'd like to thank them for sharing its history. Deborah and Tim will also be receiving the inaugural architectural style plaque that will be installed under their heritage plaque. This is now available to order for those who wish to highlight their home's style. Will Deborah and Tim please come forward and accept your plaque? challenge here. <laughs> Good evening everyone. Um, we'd like to thank uh, Mayor Captain, uh, the Heritage Commission, 
We'd like to thank Rebecca Hunter for her superb historic um, research on our home. Uh, we learned quite a lot. Um, uh, back, well, when we first bought the home back in uh, 1990, we planned on doing a f just a few minor fixer-upper projects and, and then moving on like three to five years. Well, 1990, it's been like 34 years ago. So um, we're still here, we're still at it, we're still doing projects. Um, and with, every pro with each project, the, the, the house really becomes a part of us because we do a lot of the work ourselves. And um, we have a lot of fond memories, a lot of, we've spent a lot of nights, weekends, vacation time just working on the home. And it's, it's been a lot of hard work, but a lot of it's gratifying work. And um, one of Tim's favorite projects is uh, doing the cedar shake siding. He's become quite the expert at it. Mm -hmm. So I'll let, you tell, let him tell you a little bit about that. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, originally, when we bought the house in 1990, um, I had done a lot of projects. We were both very young. I was only 23 when I purchased the house. So, you know, I had a good start. I've been blessed, my wife here. And uh, through the years, we've done a lot of renovation, renovation uh, you know, from the outside, painting, roofing, everything that you can think of. The house has been, uh, you know, gone through completely and updated, but the outside original looks the same, and uh, we're very happy to be here in Elgin and love the area, and our, that's why we stayed around. All we right. love our home. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> Our next plaque award for tonight is 814 Brook Street. The home was built in 1920 by architect George Morris at a cost of $18,000. It was built, by, built for David C. Cook to be used as a rooming house for employees of his company located only one block away. The home contained nine one and a half room efficiency apartments, each with its own bath. Murphy beds could be folded up during the day to create a combination living room and bedroom. A suite of rooms for a matron was located in the basement. A large dining room was also within the home so the residents could take meals there. It remained under ownership of Cook Publishing until 1948. The, the building was named the Olive Apartments in honor for a longtime Cook employee, Olive Shedden. Olive was listed in the city directory as Forelady of the Mother's Magazine Department and was living at 814 Brook until 1946. In 1997, it was repurposed into a single family dwelling. The home is considered a craftsman style American Foursquare, which is a simplistic style that conveys an air of solid respectability. We'd like to thank Nazneen and Matab Hussein for sharing the history of, of this property with us and for being a wonderful steward of their historic home. Will Nazneen and Matab please come forward and accept your plaque? I wish you could have seen the pictures after the landscaping was done. <laughs> we, it's, been, um, it's been an inside out renovation for this house for us and we are very blessed to not only have had this history of the, the home but also to have had many family members come and um, bless them. We have three children and they have growing families so we are very grateful that they have been uh, enjoying the spacious open floor plans of our home. We do also run um, uh, an Airbnb and it's been a great pleasure to have the historic home be a part of um, the enticement that you know people have enjoyed coming to vi visit us. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mehtab Hussain. This is all surreal to me. I was in the army for 20 years and being a civilian, this is a new experience for me. I retired, came here, and 
five years later, we are standing here in front of you. Nazneen actually takes the credit for the home because I was never home. I was trying to start <laughs> my dental practice in Schaumburg. So all this time, I was just, after COVID, it was scary, and we started our practice. She takes credit for the home. I don't deserve this, but thank you anyway. We really appreciate the mayor for having this honor for us. Thank you. Fifteen Fulton Street is our next plaque recipient tonight. The home was built for Benjamin Frank Cook in 1890 and designed by notable Elgin architect Gilbert M. Turnbull. In addition to designing 415 Fulton, Frank also commissioned Turnbull to design the two flat to the east where Frank resided. Frank was a Civil War veteran serving 100 days in 1864 as a private in the 141st Regiment Company C Unit of the Illinois Infantry. During his service, he sustained injuries that later led to his early death in 1902. Prior to his death, he married Maddie Etheridge and his occupation is listed as landlord. 415 Fulton is a nice example of a, the Queen Anne style and is listed as a contributing structure within the Elgin Historic District. 415 Fulton fits loosely into the free classic subtype of the style with its simpler lines and dental detailing. For much of its history, 415 was used as income property until around 1975 when the Fisher family moved into the home. The house remained within the, in the Fisher family until 2023 when it was sold to the current owners, Lisa McIntyre and Guy Merker. We'd like to thank Lisa and Guy for researching and sharing the history of the Benjamin Frank Cook House. Will Lisa and Guy please come forward and accept your plaque? I know how hard it is to get up here in front of 200 people, so. <laughs> the next plaque tonight is for 856 West Highland Avenue. The home was built for Lewis and Francis Baker in 1893 for $5,500. The home was designed by local architect W. Wright Abel. In 1887, Lewis moved to Elgin and established the Elgin Manufacturing Company, which was located on the Fox River, directly where Highland Avenue's bridge begins on the east side. And you can see it's no longer there. <laughs> the foundry remained on the river until 1913 when it was moved to the corner of North Grove Avenue and what was historically North Street, renamed Symphony Way. The foundry was demolished in 2001 to make way for the center of Elgin. 856 West Highland Avenue is considered a shingle style, two and a half story home, which gained popularity for the upper classes, though it still came second to the concurrent Queen Anne style at this time. The Baker family owned the home for 50 years. The interior of the home retains much of its original features. Uniquely, one fireplace catches the eye, not for its ornateness or lack thereof, but for the bas-relief scenic panel inset within it. The relief depicts a man chopping wood in a forest next to a river. Below, it is an inscription that reads, The Rail Splitter, Lincoln Series Number 1. It was likely designed by Christian Schneider of Abraham Lincoln as a rail splitter on the banks of the Sagamon River. A similar scene can be found at Lincoln Hall at the University of Ch um, Illinois Urbana-Champaign. The current owners, Mark Thayer and Mo Grays, purchased the home in 2022. Thank you for sharing the history of your home. Will Mark and Mo please come forward and accept your plaque?
Thanks everybody very much. This is very nice and I am very proud to be in this beautiful home. We haven't been there very long, but we're enjoying it. And at the symphony, we're in the preservation business also. And moving to Elgin only three years ago, I've been incredibly impressed by the history, the beauty of the homes here, the buildings, and the pride that the city takes in them. I think that's extremely important. I grew up enjoying my grandparents' house in New York, which was built during the Civil War, and have enjoyed collecting many pieces of furniture from the family and, and other places I've lived that fit perfectly into this house. And I always wanted a house like this. The details are beautiful and really show what the city has been, where it's come from, and I think it's terrific that it's important to the city to preserve it. Too much has been torn down. I hope that's over. And I hope that always continues, that we preserve and update and evolve with our time, like the symphony's doing and like you're doing with the beautiful architecture here. I hope that never stops, and I'll certainly enjoy being part of it. Come on by and visit the house sometime. Thank you so much. The next plaque tonight is for 910 West Highland Avenue. The home was built for Lillian and George Sherwood in 1910 for $5,000. They did not live in the home long before they sold it to Gus Davis in 1915, who used the property as rental income. The configuration of a square house with two stories under a hipped roof became known as a box house, more commonly known now as an American four square. An American four square enjoyed popularity from the early 1900s well into the 1920s. Uniquely, the architect of 910 West Highland used decorative elements from a variety of name styles. The details found on this home, including the decorative ionic columns that hold up the porch pediment, um, and the main roof, which has a, what's called a broken pediment with the eave returns, are um, designs that are, come from the classical revival styles. The horizontal banding found at the second floor windows and square columns and knee walls found at the porch are reminiscent of the prairie style. The current owners, Eric and Jenny Henriksen, purchased the home in 2022. Unfortunately, Eric and Jenny were unable to make it tonight, but will, give, will be given their plaque at a later time. One twenty four Hinsdale Place is our next plaque recipient tonight. The home, along with its neighbor at one twenty eight Hinsdale, were built in eighteen ninety for Amaziah P. Spitzer as income properties. Amaziah was born in eighteen twenty eight and was a farmer residing in Bloomingdale, Illinois. Upon retiring, his family moved to Elgin, where they took residence at three thirty seven Park Street. 124 Hinsdale remained as income property until 1936 when it was sold to Ora and Anna Lettner. The Lettners were first owners to occupy 124 Hinsdale Place. Ora worked at the Family Meat Market, which was established in 1892 at 177 East Chicago Street. In 1894, the market moved to 201 East Chicago, known as the Lettner Brothers Block, built at a cost of $10,000. The Lettners occupied the home until 1981. When Spitzer decided to build the twin homes at 124 and 128, he chose a simple and practical design that would not be costly to construct. The homes are considered homestead, gable front buildings, which was a common plan for workers' housing in the 1890s. In 2016, Louis and Melissa Patino purchased the home for their family of four. Louis is a subcontractor for IDOT in road design and discovered Elgin while working along Interstate 90. They enjoyed the area so much to move here from Chicago. We'd like to thank Lewis and Melissa for choosing Elgin as your home and for sharing the history of 124 Hinsdale Place. Will you please come forward to accept your plaque?
Hello, everybody. I just want to say thank you to the commission and to the mayor. It's a great honor. This house uh, hasn't been easy, you know, ups and downs, repairing just about every other month something, as you all know, around this area. Um, and I'm very, very honored. Thank you, guys. Our next plaque award for tonight is 302 McClure Avenue, built in 1909 for Charles and Sophie Gertz for a cost of $2,000. Charles was a mason by trade and worked for his uncle at the Charles E. Gertz & Son Construction Company. The notable Elgin builders were located at 57 Douglas Avenue and built this home among other buildings, including the historic Masonic Temple at 312 East Chicago Street, the Charles and Louise Bush House at 616 Park Street, and 12 South Dubot Avenue to name a few. Charles passed away in 1934 and his wife and eldest son Edward remained in the home until her death in 1956. Upon his passing the home was rented and then sold to the next owners in 1969. The home is a nice example of a hipped roof bungalow with many of its original features including the entrance doors, multi-light windows, art glass windows, original porch elements, and a craftsman style porch light as well as the highly detailed brickwork. What many in the area may remember about this home was a great burr oak that grew next to the sidewalk. It was said to be at least 300 years old with this trunk measuring 14 and a half feet in circumference. Unfortunately, the tree fell in 2014, though current owners Gigi York and Caitlin Heidi have replanted a burr oak in the same exact spot. Many thanks to Gigi and Caitlin for sharing the history of and being thoughtful stewards of this home. Will Gigi and Caitlin please come forward and accept your plaque. Thank you so much. Um, we bought the house just over a year ago. Um, and yeah, the first thing we did was planted a burr oak tree. It is now three feet tall. Um, so in 299 years, watch out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, everything inside the house is original, including the floors, a built-in little cubby. Um, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and yeah, we've, we've had fun replacing all the mechanicals. Roof is next. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, but yeah, come by and see the house. It's great. Thanks. Our next plaque for tonight is 909 Prospect Boulevard, built in 1912 for Josephine and John McBride. The home was a permanent advertisement for McBride's business, the Elgin Concrete and Structural Company. The company sold cement walks and concrete building blocks, such as those used on 909 Prospect. John was born in Ireland and immigrated in 1872 and arrived in Plato, Illinois in 1880 where his family farmed. In 1886, John married Josephine and were living in Elgin by 1900. In 2023, the current owners, Dennis and Barbara Del Carlo, purchased the house. After living in and remodeling six previous homes, they found 909 Prospect and fell in love with the home. The Del Carlos noted that the home is a beautiful building with a rich history and deserved to be appreciated. We'd like to thank Dennis and Barbara for all of their efforts in the restoration of this property and for researching and sharing the history of the McBride House. Will Dennis and Barbara please come forward and accept your plaque. Thank you to the mayor and the historical commission. And I must say, especially to Rebecca Hunter, got the name right, because she loved this 
house before we ever found it. And it was quite the ugly duckling, but when we looked for homes in Elgin, it just, my husband said, this I can do something with. And it's been a real joy. I call it her because it just feels like it welcomed us. And before we moved here, to me, Elgin was driving my grandmother to Lee Ward's when I was in high school, and that was it. And then we found Elgin, and most of our old, old friends live close by in different towns, and we could not be happier. Yeah. We could not be happier. So thank you very much for this, and stop by. There's always something to do. <laughs> Our last plaque for tonight is 463, 465 St. Charles Street. The home was built in 1892 for William and Elizabeth Fuller by Preston Garden for $3,500, which also included the barn. William was a retired farmer when he built this home and lived here until he passed in 1924. The Fullers shared their new home with Miss Mary Peabody, who was known for her early involvement with what eventually became the Larkin Children's Home. The Mary Peabody Home for Babies was listed at 463 St. Charles in 1894 and 1895 until space was donated at 600 Margaret Place and ultimately found a permanent space at 1212 Larkin. Elizabeth's maiden name is Taswell and was the great aunt to Charles Taswell who started Elgin's first brewery, Elgin Eagle Brewing. Elizabeth passed away in 1946 leaving the home to her son William and his wife. When William passed in 1971, the house was then sold out of the family. The house underwent major restoration by Habitat for Humanity in 2016. The aluminum siding was removed and original architectural details were restored and reconstructed. In 2016, the restored house won a Painted Ladies Award from the Chicago Paint and Coatings Association. The home was recently purchased by brothers Josh and Justin Lung, who were eager to find out the history of their home. Will Josh please come forward and accept your plaque. Everyone. I'm Josh Lung. So 465, 463, St. Charles Street is really a reflection of hard work, dedication, just like Habitat for Humanity. And uh, Kristen also worked on the house. So just like Elgin, everyone's a hard worker. We really want to invest in Elgin. I'm a teacher, really want to be involved in the area. And we really love Elgin and we're here to make it better. And 465, 463 is really a reflection of that. We love being here. I just want to thank Kristen and the mayor. You guys do an excellent job. And I'm glad we could all come together. And thank you so much, everyone. And now I'd like to introduce Mayor Dave Captain, who will do the Mayor's Awards tonight. Mayor Captain. Do everything. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Marston. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is really an, uh, a, a special honor uh, to be able to do this. And uh, a, a city like Elgin is not built one house at a time or one building at a time or one block at a time. It's built one brick at a time and by one person at a time. That's how we got here tonight. We all came together because we all do the things that we like to do and we want to make our community better, even if it's only that much at a time. And I talked to these people that are working on their homes. They spend hours and hours out there painting a window and doing the things right. And I think that's where the, the city really uh, defines itself. We have people here from uh, city staff. 
that work. It's not just about building a, a city, it's about maintaining it over a period of time. And we all work hard to make sure that that happens. Uh, our efforts to restore and preserve and promote our rich heritage through tireless efforts of passionate property owners, professional contractors, dedicated volunteers have greatly contrib contributed to the beautification of this city. And so tonight we celebrate and honor the 2024 Mayor's Awards recipients for their dedication, hard work, commitment to historic preservation. Nominated by their peers for their extraordinary work, they prove the Elgin civic pride in its heritage is alive and well. The first award this evening will go to the Elgin History Museum for their sensitive rehabilitation and adaptive reuse of the 1846 Nancy Kimball Cobblestone House, located at 302 West Chicago Street, into a satellite museum. The home was constructed in 1846 for William and Samuel Kimball. The brothers were the, home, were the sons of Joseph Kimball, co-founder of Elgin. Upon completion, the home was gifted to their mother, Nancy Currier Kimball, the home is comprised of cobblestone, load-bearing masonry construction, and is believed to be the oldest surviving residence in the city of Elgin. Over the years, with poor ownership, the single-family home was converted into four apartments in the 1950s and into six, six apartments by 1970. The city purchased the property in 2009 and found that it was in significant disrepair and unfortunately had had, uh, had to pause its rehab efforts. Now I'm going to stop here and tell you a story. I was on the city council at that time and Jack Shales went and looked at the house. And he came back and he said, Dave, what did you guys buy? <laughs> he said, I went into the basement and I can see the sun through the roof. And they had cut, uh, there was a 12 by 12 timber in the basement and somebody had come with a chainsaw and cut it in half so they could divide the house up into pieces. And so that was what the start was and we talked about stopping for a, a short time but it uh, uh, came to fruition over years and years of hard work. In 2015, the Elgin History Museum made the momentous step with the uh, encouragement of the Near West Neighborhood Association to take on the rehab of the uh, home. After eight years of fundraising, countless volunteer hours, and many board meetings, it became an amazing asset and anchor to the neighborhood and to Elgin as a whole. The effort was more than just saving a building, it was about a larger purpose and is reflected in the project's motto, Save the Cobblestone, Build the Neighborhood. Thank you for the Elgin History Museum and to its volunteers for all your efforts to rehabbing the uh, Nancy, Co Nancy Kimball Cobblestone House into a landmark that will be used by the community for the next 178 years. Will the representatives of the Elgin History Museum please come forward. Thank you for this recognition. My name is Liz Marston. I'm the museum director, and we have this amazing cobblestone team up here of people who spent eight, no, maybe nine years um, helping to put this, this house back together again. And we, the museum did this not on our own, but with many of your help that are in the audience and with the full partnership of the city of Elgin. So we, we couldn't have done that without everybody making sure that they were on board with this project. It is one of the coolest, um, I think, little buildings in Elgin. Oh, hi everyone. And uh, 
It's, uh, it's a cool building. It's a building that we're, we're finding a lot of people are, are, are just in love with and love meeting there. And it's also, it was also one of the biggest problem properties that we had. But we, as a team, not only just this team, but all of you and the city of Elgin helped pull it together uh, from a problem property to a, a real uh, showpiece. So thank you for the recognition. And uh, I think Bill wants to say something too? No, I think no? you said quite enough. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, and please come and uh, give us a visit. Yeah. Our next award goes to the Elgin Public Museum for their effort in re renovating the endangered species exhibit. Uh oh. Oh, okay. To Got stuck together. Yep. Sorry. Our next award goes to the Elgin History Museum for creating and providing a local history workbook, The Story of Our Towns, for elementary school uh, children in the school district U46, which, now, which is acceptable on, uh, accessible on laptops for over 10,000 third and fifth graders. After years of discussion and review, the workbook was selected by U46 to be a special resource for classrooms. The story of our towns was first written by the late Elgin historian Mike Elft in the 1970s and used for decades until the mid-1990s as an outline for local history education. In 2020, museum education educator Rebecca Miller updated the text and added work, uh, worksheets, uh, biographies of notable citizens that would again be used as a special resource for the students within U46. Extra content included landmarks and student touch points like Lord's Park, the Planetarium, Elgin's first fire truck. The workbook is also available in Spanish. The story of our towns has well been, has been well uh, received in its first school year and can easily be updated by teachers with uh, feedback from students. This resource educates and promotes Elgin heritage and providing context with the histories of adjacent towns. It is a creative way to connect thousands of students and hundreds of teachers to their own history and create a sense of place. Thank you for all your efforts in promoting Elgin's history, no matter the age. Will representatives of Elgin History Museum please come forward and accept the award. Everyone. I'm Rebecca Miller, the museum educator at the Elgin History Museum. Uh, thank you for this wonderful honor. It was a privilege to work on this book. It is, uh, has its core in Mike Elf's 1970 work of the same title, um, which I, w I discovered when I first took my job at the museum. It literally is a mimeographed work. Um, it had hand-drawn, beautiful little hand-drawn little pictures of trains and pocket watches, but it was mimeographed. It was not going to get out of uh, the dark ages without a little bit of help. So it was a privilege to work on it and update it for today's uh, user and to help it be accessible to students and teachers in the format they needed, which meant Spanish and English on a Chromebook, things that they were, could relate to easily. So those additions really were valuable. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I just want to remind people that um, I come from a town about 50 miles from Elgin, so don't hold that against me. But when I was a kid, the only thing I knew about my local town's history was what was written on the back of the menu at the diner. And I'm very proud that the children of Elgin do not have to have that poor starting point, that they have this book to get them going. Thank you. Thank you. Our next award goes to the Elgin Public Museum for their effort in renovating the endangered species exhibit, 
created by artist Heather Dorsch, and which includes uh, drawings and reports from Elgin area children. The Elgin Public Museum was constructed in 1907 and donated to the city by George and Mary Lord. It was uh, designated by, uh, designed, excuse me, by notable architect uh, David Postel and contains fascinating exhibits showcasing Elgin's natural history one of which was the Museum's Endangered Species exhibit, situated on the second floor next to two extinct condors. The exhibit needed updating both in design and content. With a Siegel Foundation grant, the museum was able to hire local artist Heather Dorsch to create a vibrant mural that features threatened and endangered species in the immediate Elgin area. The mural flows elegantly with the adjacent 1930s artwork and contains mounted detachable renderings of the species so that they may be changed in the future or hope that these species may be taken off the endangered list. In addition, Heather provided a fascinating time-lapse species that can be viewed with a QR code. The museum was uh, also asked to help, uh, asked for help from local children to assist, uh, assist the exhibit by providing drawings and reports, ensuring this educational exhibit is related to all ages. Thank you for your contributions and your efforts in educating, promoting Elgin's natural history in one of its most significant landmarks. Will representatives of the Public Museum please come forward and accept your award. No, that's okay. No, 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 no. they're your no, words, no, sir. That's okay. No, no, it's all right. We're doing fine. <laughs> okay. We have two. Okay. Come on over here. <laughs> There's a lot of us. I don't know. <laughs> She's Heather. Okay. Okay. Scooching. Scooching. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Elgin Heritage Commission. Um, the thank yous. Also very high on that list are the Siegel Foundation, where they go. Thank you so much for the grant that made this possible. Uh, we have, um, yes. And our board president, Judy Hayner, who lent her artistic eye and talents. Museum assistant, Abby Rasmussen, who did so much research and curation work. Our volunteer extraordinaire, Mike McGrath, who helped with everything there is to help with in creating an exhibit. Deb McMullen, I know she's out there somewhere, who uh, helped coordinate the uh, children's part in the, in the project. And I just want to really quickly reel off the kids' names. Jaden, Ryan, Lucy, Conrad, one, Conrad, two. James, Bella, Melanie, Loretta, Peyton, Izzy, Abigail, Lily, Skyly, Ben, Elijah, Joshua, Addison, Emery, and Casey. And most of all, we, we had the perfect artist for this project, so I'd like to turn this over to Heather Dorsch to say a few words. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I want to say thank you to my parents for sending me to art school and paying for it. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you to my partner of 10 years, Brian, for always supporting my art endeavors. Um, I also want to thank John LaFleur for getting Sherry and I together um, and the city of Elgin for being a mecca for artists for as long as I've been around at least. Um, Elgin is synonymous with art and it's important for our heritage um, and it's also important that we shine a light on our ecosystems and the preservation of those as well as our history. So thank you very much. A quick plug. I've not been inside of the Elgin Public Museum for 50 years. The two-headed calf is gone but make certain you get there. It is an extraordinary, extraordinary asset for our city.
Thank you. Our next award goes to Heidi Schroeder for the restoration of her home located at 802 Douglas Avenue, including rehabilitation of her porches, repainting her home in an appropriate paint scheme. The home was built in 1894 for successful grocer Arthur Shaley and designed by prominent Elgin architects Turnbull and Postel for $5,000. It was then home to Fred Ackerman, who rec was recognizable for their Cradle to the Grave department store, nicknamed the Big Store, located at 168 East Highland Avenue. More families came and went until Heidi Schroeder and her late husband Michael purchased the home in 2008. The three-story house typifies the uh, Queen Anne and High Victorian style. It was a, a visually contrasting elements, no flat surfaces, ionic columns, a witch's cap, curved glass, and a palladian window to name a few significant elements to the home. A few years ago, with the help of historic re uh, rehabilitation, Grant restored the front porches and side porches, and most recently, she took on the monumental effort to repaint her home in a wonderfully appropriate paint scheme. It also recently won Best Use of Color for a Victorian Home by the Chicago Painting and Coatings Association. We'd like to thank Heidi and all of her efforts in preserving her iconic uh, Queen Anne uh, style home at 802 Douglas Hall. Well, Heidi, please come forward and accept your award. I forgot something. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's so great to be here tonight. I'm so honored to have been selected to receive the 2024 Mayor's Award for the restoration of the porches and the painting on my house. Thank you to Dan Miller for nominating me. I was so excited when I got the letter and thank you to the Eldon Historical Commission for selecting 802. Um, owning a historical house is quite a journey. It's been a journey of love and dedication and uh, made possible by all the many people I've met along the way. I would like to thank the Eldon Historical Commission and Kristen Sunquist for the historical preservation grants that they oversee. Without this grant, I would have struggled to restore my porches. There was uh, so much work and everything needed restoration. Um, Kristen oversaw this, and her knowledge and expertise were a real blessing. Uh, with um, Carpentry with integrity did the job and rebuilt the porch and refurbished the columns, and they did a great job. Now 802 had a new porch, thank God, otherwise it would have been a ladder probably up to the window. <laughs> but um, uh, the next step on the journey was the peeling paint and dealing with that. And uh, I had always thought about what colors I would paint my house. When I first bought the house, the real estate agent said, oh, what color are you gonna paint? Are you gonna paint it like raspberry or something? I said, no, I'm gonna keep it the way it is for until I until I you know, would know what colors to paint it. Well, when it came down to it, I didn't know what colors to paint it. And I met Josh, um, Joshua Martin of Josh's Painting. And uh, he did just a great job. When I first met him, he told me that he was a, the paint god. And I said, oh, really? And um, he just, uh, 
you know, could he really is an artist and he really brought out all the detail in my house. I always thought it was a rather plain house and um, but after he was done with it, it, it just has so much detail, I just can't believe it. Um, he turned it into a true painted lady. And, um, you know, his wife was instrumental in that too because at one point I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep it taupe. And he said, no, nope, no, nope, you got to go, you got to go plum. You're a plum person. Your eyes light up when we talk about plum. So she, you know, and... Um, I had uh, so much help. Uh, Tristan, who works with them, gave me um, a color consultation, like every time I had a meltdown, and uh, went through all these colors, and just, um, you know, somehow the colors just kind of, the, the house found the colors. And, um, and, and Josh would want everyone away, and he would, like, meditate on where to put things and where to change things, and, um, it, it was really, it was really fantastic um, how it turned out. I wanted to thank Brian Anderson, who couldn't be here tonight, who's always uh, helped me with the house. It was um, his his uh, mother grew up in that house. It was the second owner, and um, you know he has always taken an interest in it. And I'm you know sad that he couldn't be here tonight, but he's here in spirit, and he talked to me right before this, and. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, John Crow, who did, um, who restored the, the, the um, foundation of the house. You know, it had a lot of cement all slapped on it and stuff. And I was kind of worried about water coming in and stuff. And he, he just drilled it all out and did beading on it and just did a fantastic job. I never really noticed, uh, you know, all the, the intricacy that goes into the foundation of a house. Um, you know, and um, most of all, though, I want to thank all of you who care so much about our town and all of its uh, beautiful our old architecture. Um, you help foster the value of our homes and our architecture, the history, and our neighborhoods, and our friendships. Without you, the journey would not have a heart. Um, I thank Kristen Sunquist again. I'm glad you're such a lover of old homes, and I love old houses too. I love the squeaky floors. I love the wavy glass. I love the peeling wallpaper. I love the rotting wood. No, I don't love the rotting wood. <laughs> but thank you so much for this award. And I just, um, this is for you, Kristen. Save all the old houses. <laughs> Our next award goes to Judy Van Dusen for her tireless and devoted volunteerism as a genealogical researcher, helping people find and research their families. Judy Van Dusen is an Elgin genealogist who has been helping people locate their ancestors for many years. She is a leader in Elgin Genealogical Society, serving multiple times as president and treasurer since the 1990s. She researches family information at the museum and at the library, looking for connections to Elgin history. Over the years, Judy's helped create name indexes for the museum and library collections, including the Larkin Home Minutes, Channing Cemetery Burials, Reber Mortuary Records, American Legion Post 57 Records, and the Mother's Pension for Elgin Township. She also indexes local business, uh, business newsletters such as the Toastmaster Tatler, the Watchword tabloid newspapers in the uh, 1940s, Cases and Faces for Elgin American, and the Rawhide Roundup for Chicago Rawhide, to name a few. For over 30 years, Judy has researched hundreds of families as a volunteer genealogist, index sources to make it easier for families to find their ancestors, all of which are accessible to Elginites and visitors on the Elgin Genealogical website. Thank you for connecting Elgin families to their ancestral past. Will Judy please come forward and accept your award? Oh, not a whole lot. <laughs> okay, I'll hold it. 
it to your daughter. Thank you, everybody, for this award. Heritage Commission, Mayor uh, Rebecca Hunter, wherever you are, okay? <laughs> um, it is nice to be recognized for doing something that you really like to do. So if anybody wants us to research their family, just come to the library. Thank you again. Thank you, Mayor. Our next award goes to Manuel Roja for his sympath sympathetic carpentry work, restoring many historically significant structures in Elgin. Working in Elgin for over 10 years, Manuel has done the opportunity to work on many historic homes, including full restoration, spot replacement, painting, and rear additions. He is continually striving to learn more about his trade and the history of Elgin. As noted by many of his clients, he is sympathetic to the needs of modern living, but truly is a craftsman in the construction of addition, porches, and other structures to ensure these buildings are true to the style and age of the home. His clients also noted that he is very calming influence in a sometimes stressful situation. The psychologist on top of it. Some of the homes that, that you may recognize that Manuel has worked on include uh, 129 Tennyson Court, where he rehabbed the historic front porch, 216 Villa Street, where he scraped and painted the entire house and built a carriage-style door for the garage, as well as a remarkable transformation of 329 St. Charles Street. One project that is near and dear to Elginites including, includes the Nancy Kimball cobblestone house of which Manuel built the lift enclosure and the rear deck and, stair, and staircase. The, re, the rear of this property included a very difficult landscape and included many challenges that Manuel overcame again and again. Thank you for continuing to help property owners fix and preserve their homes. With Manuel, please come forward and accept your award. Okay, I want to say thank you, to Mayor, for great words, words for me. I want to say thank you for this community to be so welcoming to me, their streets, their people, and of course, the historic houses, because the historic houses ha have your own history of everybody. And of course, I want to say thank you to the team of uh, historic renovation for the city, especially to Kristen. Help me to, to, this, uh, to follow this journey with uh, her help. Thank you. Our next award goes to Peggy Hernandez for her universal impact as the director of U46 Planetarium for the last 14 years. Peggy has dramatically increased the public appreciation of Earth and space science through her public sky programs and building history of the planetarium. Built in 1909 for the Elgin National Watch Factory, it was an observatory to help time their watches to the stars. With this stewardship, she creates exhibits within the planetarium on earth science minerals included in the community in rehabbing the second floor telescope. Peggy recently oversaw the repair of damage in the telescope's operators area as well as made the space a little uh, time capsule of what it was like to time watches in the stars. Not only does Peggy instruct hundreds of students a month in tours of the planetarium, but she also continues in on weekends to help in the planetarium for a wide variety of audiences for events like Open Elgin, the Catastrophe Crawl, and the Historic Housewalk Weekend. 
Peggy is retiring at the end of this school year and she will deeply be missed for all the work he has, she has done for this neighborhood and for this community. Peggy has helped introduce thousands of students and adults to the wonder of the universe and Elgin has been lucky to have her as a steward of this historic educational building. Will Peggy please come forward. Boy, in 2009, when I was hired to be the new teacher in the planetarium, I was excited. I, I knew I would like it. I had no idea how much I would love the intertwining of the history of the Elgin National Watch Company and the people in the community, the science behind measuring the stars to figure out the exact time so they could send it over to the factory to make really awesome watches. And then, of course, the teaching of all of this to the students that I see every single day. And in addition to that, the weekends and evenings that I spent cleaning, organizing, digging through the deep, dark recesses and finding really, really neat objects. And there are people in this room that I knew I could call and ask questions and would have answers. Um, we have Steve Muckow and Mark Kuntz, who have been involved in the planetarium since the 1960s when it became part of the school district. They're responsible for this gigantic, super heavy telescope grinder machine -y thingy that Steve Muckow spotted when he was with his father, uh, a renowned radio collector, collecting up an old radio at someone's house and he knew it was for making telescopes and they moved it to the observatory. Bill Briska, Liz Marston, and Lucy Elliott came over to the planetarium within the first week I was there and encouraged me to do what I could to learn more about the building and open it up and that's what I ended up doing. Lucy Elliott and Liz really helped me with the scraping of the windows in the uh, telescope room with local expert, experts that had done their own homes. Doug Tomsha, Tomsha, I think, was the tallest guy, and he was the only one that could lean over the railing and actually scrape the top of it without falling, so we were thankful for his height. Bill Risto took home the dust cover over the summer, over the winter, to scrape it and brought it back and put it back together. My husband took the wheels home and took the bearings out and cleaned them and scraped the paint off of them, so um, there's a lot done in that building that I most certainly did not do alone, and I want to thank all those, all those people that that helped, and I want to make sure I didn't leave anyone off, and I did. It's all the U46 workers who have supported me, and I've managed to get almost everyone to love the building, and they come over and they help me, and I know when something's not running right, and they come over and fix it, and they repair floors, um, and Deb McMullen, the current science coordinator, is here, and she has been super supportive on every crazy idea I've ever had, and let me go ahead and give it a try. So. It's been a pleasure welcoming the public and of course lots of students into the planetarium in the 14 years that I've been there. And thank you for the honor and thank you John Marston for nominating me. That was very kind. Our next award goes to Rafael and Rigo Villa Gomez for their impactful assistance in the 2023 historic Elgin House Tour to organize and fully staff 722 Douglas with over 25 bilingual docents, as well as bilingual advertising, making the event more accessible to the Hispanic and Latino communities. A new feature of the, of the Elgin Historic Tour in 2023 was offering bilingual tours to, in Spanish to make the event more accessible. The idea was talked about for years, but Rafael and his brother Rigo made it a reality, along with homeowner Brian Pinon and Kristen Harvey.
And the camaraderie, camaraderie of the bilingual docents opened the tour to many guests who have never attended before. They also created videos posted to Facebook, reaching a new audience interested in Elgin's historic architecture. Rafael and Rigo are helping with the historic house tour again in 2024 and hope to lead another house that is bilingual. Thank you for providing the opportunity to connect Elgin's Hispanic and Latino community to Elgin's, his, Elgin's architectural and historic past. Will Rafael and Rigo please come forward? I feel like uh, this is the Academy Awards here. <laughs> but wasn't that a great video? Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, I want to thank the, uh, the, the mayor, the, the, the Heritage Commission, the Pinon family, Brian and Kristen Liberty, and you know, more than anything, the 25 docents. They were the real superstars. I know some are here in attendance. If you can please stand up, those docents. They were the, uh, the real superstars of this. And John, obviously, for, uh, for the nomination. But when I, when I pitched the idea to John, I don't know who was more excited, me or him. Because <laughs> he said it's been years since they've been trying to do this. And uh, I was a docent uh, about three years ago, uh, thanks to Jeanette. Uh, she, she needed volunteers. And I was yeah, sure, I'll do it. I, you know, I'm a realtor, so I've been in these homes. But never seen them in this, in this sense, you know, the history behind it. And I was a docent, and uh, interestingly enough, you know, I saw very few Hispanics coming to the houses, with Elgin being more than 50% Hispanic. I'm like, something's missing. We gotta do something about this. So I pitched the idea to John and Matt and everybody at the committee, you know, Pat and his wife, uh, Dan and his wife. And, you know, right away, they were, they liked the idea. So we went with it, uh, you know, it was, I think, the, the perfect home to start the, uh, the video with. And it was just fun, it was a lot of fun. You know, we use the power of video and social media to really put this together. And I think it's still getting views now. I think it was, I don't know, 10,000 views by now. So it was really fun, it was a lot of fun doing it. Uh, obviously, you saw Steve's car there, which was a beautiful addition. We couldn't do it without the car. I told Brian, we need a car. He said, I got your guy, I got your guy. So thank you, thank you for, for, the, for the wonderful car. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of fun. I think uh, we wanted, you know, sh tell our Hispanic community that they are also part of this event because a lot of them live, they live in these homes and they really don't know the history behind it and the detail and how they can restore some of those homes to some of these beautiful homes that are on the tour. So thank you again. And I know I think my brother wants to say a couple words. Well, first off, I... I'm really grateful to be up here and I want to applaud all you guys for preserving Elgin's culture and Elgin's history. It, I, I feel really grateful to be here as a first time participant of the Elgin Historic House Tour. And of course my brother and the whole team. I don't feel like I deserve this because it's my first time doing it, but again, I'm super grateful to be here. And doing the video, it was a lot of fun. That was the funnest part of the whole thing. Felt like we were in Hollywood, felt like we were making it big. It was amazing, it was so much fun. And I'm really looking forward to doing it again this year. Hopefully have a couple more nice cars in there and we invite everyone to come to the house tour 2024. Thank you so much. Our next award goes to Sherry Blazier for promoting Elgin history through the creation of the popular Elgin Nostalgia and History Facebook page, creation of a podcast and videos about Elgin's uh, of songs about Elgin titled My Elgin and writing a detailed history of the Elgin Public Museum titled Elgin's White Elephant. 
Many know Sherry as the director of the Elgin Public Museum. She has worked tirelessly for years to improve the Elgin Public Museum, to update exhibits that are cultural and locally appropriate, and for bringing more visitors with engaging lectures, partnering with U46 to realign their exhibits for their new curriculum, as well as yearly architectural tours of the 1909 structure. Sherry also has been an amazing advocate for Elgin's history for decades outside of her duties at the museum. With the creation of the Elgin Nostalgia and History Facebook page, she has connected just over 6,000 past and current Elginites to their history. Humorously, to keep out those who aren't interested in history of Elgin, she added a test before being accepted where she talks, where she asks, the potential member say something only someone from Elgin would know. She also volunteers for the Lions Club and the annual Foxtrot. In addition, she has a, song of, uh, a podcast of songs and videos that she created about Elgin and our history called My Elgin. Thank you for being a tireless advocate for Elgin's history. Will Sherry please come forward and accept your award. Thank you, Mayor Captain and the Elgin Heritage Commission for this wonderful honor. Um, this doesn't happen alone, of course. My name's on the plaque, but it doesn't happen alone. So thank you to everyone in Elgin Nostalgia and History. And when he said there's a, uh, an entry question, say something that only someone from Elgin would know, just by the way, the most popular answer is Gromers. <laughs> Um, over the past weekend, the group passed 6,000 members, and I'd like to name them all, but I won't. It is the best behaved Facebook group out there, probably because if anyone starts talking politics, religion, or their duct cleaning business, they get booted. Thank you, One Source Productions and Jeremy Hayes for the unique opportunity to do a podcast, and Jeff Myers for his constant en uh, en encouragement. For my fundraiser books, Elgin's White Elephant and This Is My Elgin, which were fundraisers for Elgin Public Museum, I'd like to thank the board for giving me their permission to write them, but let's face it, I just did it whether they wanted me to or not. And I want to thank family here tonight who saw me through a rough time a few years back, my cousin Lisa and her husband Jim, my nephews and their wives, um, Brandon and Joe and Sean and Selena, and sadly no longer with us, but thank you to my knight in a shining white Buick. But this is really my dad's fault. I was born in Elgin and I've lived here all my life, and dad was always spotting something or someone of local significance, and he would say to me, try to remember this. And so I did. He made me feel like I was living in a very important town in a very important time, and it was somehow up to me to someday tell others all about it. And I still feel like I live in a very important town in a very important time. Thank you very much. Our last award goes to the Elgin Math and Science Academy for their impressive and sympathetic rehabilitation of the John S. Van Bergen designed administration building on the Elgin Math and Science Academy campus. They will, receiving the, they will be receiving the Henry Jensen Award given to those who have done extraordinary exterior or interior rehabilitation work completed within the past year. In a picturesque setting near the Fox River, the campus is a jewel hidden in the woods and contains an important natural landscape with several significant buildings by, prairie, uh, by noted prairie school architect John Van Bergen. The low-slung buildings with their stucco, stone, and tile details fit originally into Van Bergen's landscape design. In 1929, Van Bergen designed the administration building in the heart of the campus. Led by Dan Alexander and the EMSA board, this overwhelming project to rehabilitate the 1929 building was completed in just under eight months, beginning in January of 2023. 
with the assistance of Wheeler Kearns Architects, Bully and Andrews, and TEM Environmental. They took the interior and exterior of the administration building that was in various states of decay and unusable into an extraordinary space, keeping the vision of John S. Van Bergen intact. When the Mayor's Awards were held on the EMSA campus in 2021, this building was included on the tour. And anyone who took the tour would be stunned at the quality and quantity of the work done. The building and integrity of the school buildings and surrounding property are a rare extant example of the country school campus. And we'd like to thank Elgin Math and Science Academy for all the work you are doing to save and keep this historic site relevant and open to all. Will those representing EMSA please come forward and accept your award. This one's for the school. We have three more for the architects. <laughs> we, got a, we, got a, we got a handful. Who's most of Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Carrie Kelly. I'm the board chair of the Elgin Math and Science Academy. And in case you don't know, we are a free, tuition-free public charter school. And we celebrate with the expeditionary learning model on this absolutely gorgeous, enchanting campus um, that used to be the um, Fox River Country Day School and Chicago Junior School. Now this building is the heart of the campus, as you heard, and it was, it was really in bad shape, and they, we alluded to this a little bit, but they didn't mention some of the details, like the lower level in the wintertime became a skating rink because everything was frozen. You could go down and go ice skating, not, not really, but, and um, we did have to do a, a little bit of an eviction on the upper levels. A very um, stubborn raccoon had to finally be relocated. Um, but it was on the Landmarks Illinois Most Endangered list and um, because it's so significant architecturally. And so we're really proud that this dream team was able to bring this to life and to provide two of the most beautiful classrooms that any middle schooler will ever learn in in Illinois. And then also a wonderful learning lab in the basement. So I really want to turn it over to Dan, who was the, um, the orchestrator of this and the dream team of Wheeler Kearns and Bullion Andrews. So thank you to them. Well, I have so many people to thank, but it really starts with Carrie Kelly, who is our board chair and our founding board chair. Uh, we're in our sixth year serving you, the city of Elgin and U46, and Carrie and many other community people came together to advocate for this new option for Elgin's families. And as Carrie said, today we serve 465 students, K through eight, and with this building's completion, we were able to actually educate um, all of them in appropriate facilities, beautiful facilities. Um, so thank you to Carrie. And thank you to the board. And thank you to the city of Elgin, to Mayor Captain, to the city council, who allowed us to own the property, which allowed us to get the financing several years ago to make these buildings happen, to bring them back to life for the future for decades to come. The city's vision in allowing us to serve you um, I think is paying off. We have more than 60 staff. We work hard every day. Um, and so on behalf of Principal Jacqueline Willer, I just want to say thank you to the city of Elgin for that. And thank you to the Heritage Commission for this honor. Um, John Van Bergen would be proud if he came back and saw the administration building. He was a genius. And he was a dedicated, conscientious man whose clients told him decades later in letters how much they appreciated the care he took in designing and overseeing the construction of their, of their homes throughout the Midwest. And one of his best is this one, maybe the most significant prairie school school building in the state of Illinois. 
Um, and it's just a joy to see kids learning there. So I do definitely want to thank uh, Wheeler Kearns Architects. We have Larry Kearns and Fabiola Yep. I also want to recognize Emily Ray from their staff. They were just tremendous. Um, the building was, not only this building, but two other buildings that they've designed, very successful projects, um, such detail, such dedication to their craft, to the craft of architecture. I can't say enough good things about Wheeler Kearns Architects or Bullion Andrews. Um, some of the craftsmanship that I've seen in the awards recipients tonight, I would add Bully and Andrews to that list and all of their tradesmen. And finally, I want to um, thank Kristen Sunquist for her um, sensitive uh, and informed encouragement and um, delicate negotiation of some of the details of the renovation, which did have to take place in rather a hurry. I think it turned out just an outstanding product. And finally, if you're interested in seeing the administration building for yourself, please come uh, this coming Wednesday at 4.30, May 15th. We're doing an open house, and if you can't make it then, contact us and we'll find a way to get you on campus some other time. Thank you. At this point, I'll turn the program back to Chairman Marston for some closing comments. Thank you, Mayor Captain. I'm looking at a room full of people who appreciate older homes and buildings. And why shouldn't we? Older homes and buildings each have their own personality. This building we are in tonight is a great example. It's a fortress guarded by eagles. Its very structure lets you know of its importance. Architecture demands our respect and attention. Many of us live in older homes and in older neighborhoods. We know their importance, not just to us, but to the many who lived in them before us. They're unique, they're better built, and they will be around a lot longer than most of us. We're pretty smart for owning them, but when you ask yourself, is it also a good investment? The answer is a resounding yes. As, as preservation advocates, we've all heard it before when discussing the advantages of historic districts and historic homes with others who don't appreciate preservation. All the positives that aren't a monetary stabilize, stabilizing neighborhoods, community identity, preservation of history fall by the wayside. But the fact of the matter is that preservation turns out to be a pretty good financial investment. I hope you all saw the display set up by the Elgin History Museum. And if you haven't, make sure you take a look at it on your way out of after the day ceremony. The main point is that historical preservation is a great investment. Property values increase each decade from 5 to 35 percent over undesignated neighborhoods. This is a quantifiable benefit to being in and supporting historic districts. Anyone who drove through the uh, GPA area 40 years ago and then drove through the same area today would be amazed by the transformation. Preservation not only saved the neighborhood, but made money for the owners who are far thinking enough to see a good investment. We live in a society in which money and profit are driving forces and decisions. Fortunately, preservation allows us to invest in homes and neighborhoods, and this allows everyone to profit in actual dollars and cents. It also solidifies and protects neighborhoods and creates a stronger Elgin community. So thank you to everyone who's investing in the preservation of Elgin architecture and history. See, I told you, we are so smart <laughs> and good looking. Once again, on behalf of the Elgin Heritage Commission, I'd like to thank all of our recipients, their nominators, and for all your efforts in promoting Elgin's history and architecture. Thank you and have a good rest of the night.